I'm children's author and wearer of many hats, Gareth P. Jones. And I'm here to tell you about my brand new picture book, The Bunzel, illustrated by Loretta Shower and available to pre-order from all good bookshops. Well, actually, I'm here with my presenter hat on today and I'm here to tell you about the Paper Beach project. If you've already been here before, then you'll know that we're giving you the chance to contribute to a giant art installation that will come to life on the 12th of March. Ah, it's alive! And the event will also unveil the brand new hat for Egmont Books. Sorry, not hat, it's new look and it's new logo. And we're here to celebrate books and creativity and creative books and books about creativity and creations and you get the idea. And you can find out more at eatcliffcreatives.com forward slash paper dash beach where you can find resources to help tailor the activity to your child and also rewatch previous videos. All the previous week's videos are up there, including week one, which will tell you everything you need to know about this amazing project. In a minute, I'm going to hand you over to this week's author, the brilliant Jenny McLachlan. So make sure you've got a pen and paper and your imagination handy so that you can complete the exercise that she's going to set for you. Uh, once you've finished, I'll be back to tell you about my book, The Bunzel. Or, or rather, I'll be here to tell you about which school has won the £500 worth of books. And we'll be taking a look at the totalometer uh, to see how we're getting on with our goal of getting over 3000 entries for the Paper Beach project uh, and I'll be reminding you uh, just what you need to do to take part. Uh, but now you're in it for absolute treat. I'm going to hand you over to Jenny McLachlan, author of Land of Raw and Return to Raw. It's quite uh, hard to say uh, with my slightly soft R. And she's going to tell you about those books and uh, set an exercise for you. So I'm sure you'll all enjoy that. Oh, Land of Raw. Yeah, okay, I get it. Oh, uh, this is Jenny. Thank you, Gareth. I'm Jenny McClacklin and I write books for people just like you, like The Land of Raw and Return to Raw. I'm so excited to be taking part in the Paper Beach project. It brings together some things I really love. Drawing, art, painting, writing and beaches. One of my favourite things. I live quite near the beach. You might hear a seagull while I'm talking because they're lined up on the house opposite me. I can see them watching me with their beady yellow eyes. Now. I think, I want to tell you about how I became a writer, and I think I had most of the things I need to become a writer when I was your age. And I'm not talking about being good at punctuation or spelling, because I wasn't that great at those things um, at that point. In fact, I find, found writing hard. It used to make my hand really ache, and my handwriting was messy. I couldn't spell that well. And I was always one of the slowest people in the class to write. And I had that horrible feeling where you think, oh, it's all going quite well. And then I'd look over to the side and I was like, what? You've done a whole side and I'm still on the first paragraph or three sentences. So I made up stories in different ways. I, would have, I think I'd have loved to have made them up by writing, but I found that too difficult then. It got easier as I got older. One of the ways I used to make up stories was with, with toys and playing. So I'm sure you do this. I used to use Lego, Playmobil, and I'd make worlds, and I'd make stories happen in those worlds. I used to love tiny things, so I used to really like this. This is my little miniature school, because I've kept them. And here's a naughty owl, I used to call this wooden owl, who would come in and cause mayhem in my games. Although this wooden owl isn't Lego or playing Bill, it could go into any game to cause mischief. So what I do now is instead of using naughty owl and miniature toys to make up stories, I use words. And the other thing I do, or did, was draw. I love drawing and I still do. Here's a picture of one of my characters I drew. My book, that's Mitch. So it really helps me make up the story, it makes them come alive in my head. So you might like to do drawing for the Paper Beach project. The other thing I used to love was dressing up. So my sister and I used to do a lot of plays, putting on plays. And again, I think that was rehearsing to become a writer because when you're in a play or you're playing one of those games, you're taking on a different character. That's very much like what I do now. In fact, now when I go out walking in the woods or something, I'll often say my characters' words to each other, practice what they'll say, doing the voices as well, um, which helps me then when I go home to write, but I expect it looks a little bit strange. And the other thing I do, let me see, I've got a list here, so don't forget anything. Oh, I used to make things all the time. I still love making things because here is my dragon's egg. Did I make it or did I go into the land of raw and fetch it? Get there. So what is the land of raw? Well, in the land of raw, two children, Arthur and Rose, 
go to stay with their granddad for the summer. And he says to them that he'd like them to clear out his attic. It's a massive job. But when they're up there, they find something amazing. It's an old folding camp bed. It doesn't sound amazing, I know, but when they were little, they would crawl through this folding camp bed and play the most amazing game. Now, can any of you remember a game that you used to play when you were younger that was so good it felt real? I've got a game like that. I can remember playing a game where I used to pretend the stairs were a mountain. Me and my brother would climb this mountain and the main point of the game was knocking each other down the mountain. But in my memory, it was such a brilliant game, I can remember climbing up the snow, cold, deep, crunchy snow. It wasn't snow, it was carpet. But I suppose that gave me the thought, you know, well, what if those games that we have when we're younger, which feel real, were real? So back to the attic. I'm going to read you a little bit out from The Land of Raw. And um, Arthur has got to sleep in the attic. And he's not very keen because he saw something a bit scary up there. But he's got to sleep in there because he's had a massive fight with his sister Rose. So um, I'm going to show you the picture before I begin of the attic that Arthur goes into. Can you see that there? Ben Mantle drew that. Isn't it brilliant? That rocking horse is Prosecco. It's Rose's rocking horse. And that is the folding camp bed. It turns out attics are extremely creepy at night, especially empty ones. Moonlight streams in through the single window, lighting up the camp bed and making Prosecco look extra glittery. I step inside, my duvet trailing behind me and flick on the light switch. Nothing happens. It takes several more pushes before I realise the bulb must have gone. It doesn't matter, I'm going to sleep. I don't need a light to open a camp bed and fall asleep. And yet, it is very shadowy up here and quiet and Prosecco's silver eyeballs are staring right at me. I take a step to the left. Prosecco's still staring at me. Step to the right. He's still staring. This is stupid. Prosecco can't stare. He's made of wood and doesn't have functioning eyeballs. And Prosecco is not a he. Prosecco is an it. An inanimate object that for some reason is rocking ever so slightly. I'm about to step forward when I have the uncanny feeling that someone or something is up here in the attic with me. Immediately, I think of the shadow I saw at the window, the wizard. And for a second, I actually feel weak at the knees. So I decide to do what Dad says he always does whenever he feels scared. I laugh out loud. <laughs> wow, Dad is so wrong about that. I tell myself that it's my mind playing tricks on me again. Then I put my shoulders back and walk towards the camp bed. I'm a step away when I hear a tiny fluttering sound. I freeze and hold my breath and listen. I hear it again. It sounds like wings brushing against something and wings remind me of the map and of the wild looking face grinning at me from the window of the crow's nest. Croaky. I've thought a lot about Croaky since I found the map. It was Rose who invented him out of the two things I hated most in the world, scarecrows and crows. My scarecrow fear began when I once got lost in a maze maze. I'd run on ahead of my family and suddenly realised I was on my own, except for the scarecrows, and they were everywhere. I ran around a corner and saw a policeman scarecrow. I ran left and saw a Father Christmas scarecrow. I was about to start screaming when I spotted Mum on the next path. Mum, I shouted, forcing my way towards her, and I grabbed the sleeve of her denim jacket. Then her arm fell off. It wasn't Mum, it was an Elvis scarecrow. And that's when I started screaming. I swear to this day that their jackets were identical. I could stop there. To be honest, I could just keep going forever. So I've told you a bit about the Land of Raw. But now I want you to invent your own imaginary world, a place where the character that you've already created can go and have an adventure. And I'd like you to do this by drawing a map. Here is the map that Arthur and Rose drew when they were much younger. And if you're thinking, wow, they're good at drawing, that's because Ben Mantle, the illustrator, drew this map. But it shows the places in the land of all the bad side. That's where all the things Arthur and Rose don't like go and they're scared of. The Tangled Forest, the Archie Playgo, there's Mitch and that's her house on an island of the Archie Playgo. There's a crow's nest and if you look closely, you see Crokey staring out of the window. But enough about Royals, this is about your world. So here's a map my daughter made. You can see she loves painting and she stuck things on it. She stuck trees on and she used stamps. You could do something like that if you wanted or you could just use a pencil and a piece of paper. If you want, you can give your mapper 
your island a shape, your land a shape, like that, or perhaps a dragon shape, or just make it up. Okay, here's my world. That's a river. Looks like a big nose, doesn't it? Rocky coastline. There we are. Hmm. And then you can start to fill it up with whatever you like. Mountains, rivers, lakes, islands. I'm going to have an island shaped like an ice cream with a cherry on the top. Which I think that's more like a hat. That could be Hat Island. So fill it up with whatever you want. But one thing I would like you to do is think about something you can hide in your world that will take your character on an adventure. Something your character needs to find, or maybe something they've lost, or some something they've got somewhere they've got to get to to stop something from happening. So I'm going to imagine that inside my islands, let's give these mountains some snow, there are some caves. And here's the cave system. You get into it through here in the mountains. Here we are, let's go and see the cave. They're huge, these caves. They have underground lakes, they have castles, and if I had more time, I'd draw them. They go everywhere, all over the island, and hidden in the darkest corner of one of those caves is my character's little sister. Oh no, what's she doing? Help, she's saying, she needs to be rescued. My character needs to go and rescue her little sister down there. Put whatever you like on your map. You can label things, you could not label things. You could use a key. Let me see what have I got here. You can add creatures, mountains, trees, buildings, or not. It's entirely up to you. If you need a bit more information, I've got resources on my website. But the main thing that you need to do is let your imaginations run wild. Off you go. How do you get on? I hope you enjoyed doing that. I hope you enjoyed letting your imaginations run wild and creating a place for your own character to explore. Now, before I go, I need to talk about my submission for the Paper Beach Project and where I would like to go on my next reading adventure. I've drawn a painting. I've not drawn a painting, I've painted a painting. Here it is. There's something wrong with it though. It's the wrong size. The submissions need to be A4 if they're going to be used in the project. So I'm going to put this piece of paper over the middle bit and cut round it. Now, this is where I want to go on my next reading adventure. It's somewhere that doesn't exist yet. So I know I'm going to have to write it down if I'm going to go there. It's a strange world of black mountains and inky seas and towers shaped like mushrooms filled with tiny rooms and joined together with rope ladders. This is where I'd like to go on my next reading adventure. And if I write it down, then maybe you'll be able to go there too. But what are you going to do? Where do you want to go? You're going to draw a picture. You're going to write a poem. You're going to use words. It's entirely up to you. So have fun doing it. And now I'm going to pass you back to Gareth. I'm guessing you enjoyed that, yeah? <laughs> OK. Um, now, I'd like to share our latest picture from the Totalometer as we see how we're doing getting closer to those 3,000 entries for the Paper Beach project. <laughs> Yes, we're definitely going in the right direction, but we've still got a way to go. Thank you so much to everybody who sent in entries, but please remember to keep spreading the word about this. Tell your friends so we can get to our 3000 target. And remember, sending in entries is the only way that your school might be in with a chance to win the £500 worth of Egmont books. So make sure you do submit your entries. Last week's winner is being shown on the screen right now. So congratulations to you. The books will be on their way. So if you want to be involved and you'd like to help us reach the target of 3,000 entries and you want to be in with a chance to win £500 worth of books for your schools, then here's what you need to do. Now, our theme is adventures. I've written adventures with dragons. I've written adventures set in space. I've written adventures with pirates. And I've written adventures with ninja meerkats. So we'd like you to think about where you'd like to go on your next reading adventure. Draw us a picture, uh, draw us a map, uh, write us some words, tell us all about it using a black pen and a piece of A4 paper. And once you're done, you'll need to get an adult to help scan in your piece of paper and send it to us at eastcliffcreatives at gmail.com. In your entry, make sure to tell us the town or city where you live so we can pinpoint where you are and to tell us the name of your school so they could be in a chance to win those books. 
If you don't have a scanner, uh, then there are downloadable apps for your phones, uh, or indeed you could uh, send it to us by post. Or you could take a photo of your entry and send it to us, but it has to be a very good quality photo because we want everything to look as best as it possibly can. The silliest hat I've got this one, isn't it? And you can do this at any time by going to the website eastcliffcreatives.com forward slash paper dash beach. I hope you've enjoyed that. I'll be back next week. So don't forget to send us your submissions. Bye. <laughs>